Hello everyone, I'm Walter Pullman from the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources at the University of Vermont. And uh, today we are out at Waterbury Reservoir, a gorgeous spot uh, that many people come to go paddling and hiking right on the edge of Little River State Park in the town of Waterbury. It's just a beautiful morning in late October here. Clouds are low, loons are swimming around. Although the foliage is past peak, it's, uh, it's just a fantastic day to be here. And I'm here with my colleague, Chris Brooks, also from the University of Vermont. And we're gonna be exploring the landscape uh, sort of in and around Waterbury Reservoir. I partly say in because actually uh, there's a farming community that thrived here during the 19th century. Some of it is now covered by the reservoir, but a lot of it is exposed up on the hillside in the area that is now occupied by Little River State Park. So thanks for joining us. I wanted to say just a little bit about this place, partly because you can almost do some time traveling here in some ways, because the reservoir here is at about 600 feet above present day sea level or 500 feet above Lake Champlain. The Little River, which was dammed to make this reservoir, ultimately flows into the Winooski River. And then the Winooski River, of course, flows out into Lake Champlain. We'll hear more about why it was built from Chris in a minute, but I did want to say, if you think back into deep geologic time, there was actually a glacial lake that filled this valley at almost exactly the same elevation. Uh, if you look on a, a surficial geology map, you can see that glacial Lake Vermont that was dammed by the melting ice as the, as the glacier retreated uh, in the Champlain Valley, backed up water all the way to this elevation and uh, I like to think this is what the landscape might look like in terms of uh, at least the topography and the level of the water uh, back about 12,000 years ago. So it's pretty cool from that perspective. Water is really a theme of this place and uh, we're here, it's, uh, it's now 2020 in October, uh, but 93 years ago, October of 1927, it was a very uh, rainy fall and it led to uh, really culminated in what was called the big flood of 1927. And I have a little uh, story from that. I just want to read you a little bit about this, the flood of 1927. It had been a wet fall with October rains running 150% above normal. The ground was saturated. Even a storm of average intensity would have caused flooding, but this was no average storm. In the late morning and afternoon of November 3rd, 1927, all Vermont rainfall records were broken, with up to 10 inches of rain falling in some parts of the state. David Lublin's Vermont Weather Book says, it was as if a cubic mile of solid water had been lifted from the surface of the Atlantic Ocean and deposited on the hills and valleys of the Green Mountain State. 84 people died, including the Lieutenant Governor, S. Hollister Jackson, more than a thousand bridges were destroyed and 10,000 people were left homeless. Needless to say, this was a very significant event in uh, the lives of Vermonters during the 20th century and we still feel its legacy today. Some of it has to do with the, the whole reason that this reservoir is here. And uh, of course, since then, we have had some major floods like Hurricane Irene, which was a tropical storm by the time it reached uh, uh, Vermont. But some people think that these flood control reservoirs actually made a difference in uh, lessening the devastation that happened most recently. Of course, this reservoir is formed by the dam itself. And my colleague Chris Brooks is up there right now. So let's go join him and learn a little bit more about the history of this place. So I'm up here on Waterbury Dam, looking out over the Waterbury Reservoir. This dam was built in the 1930s, and it was a part of a series of New Deal projects around that time where the Civilian Conservation Corps the CCC, working in conjunction with the United States Army Corps of Engineers, built a series of flood control dams here in Vermont and really all over the country at that time. And so the primary impetus for building this dam was really all about flood control. And as Walt mentioned, there were a series of really devastating floods in Vermont in the early part of the 20th century, and that was really caused primarily by land use practices that dated back to the 19th century. So during the bulk of the 19th century, deforestation was happening in Vermont. 
probably sometime around the middle 19th century, say from 1850 to 1870, at the height of land clearance, as much as 70% of the forests here were cleared. And so the result of that land use was uh, increasing erosion, decreasing soil fertility, increasing sedimentation in rivers and streams and degraded water quality, and increasing flood events, increasing flood damages. So the primary impetus uh, of the dam was flood control. We knew that, uh, Vermonters knew that they needed to take some steps to protect property from flood damages. Also, around that time in the early part of the 20th century, there was an increasing recognition among Vermonters about the effects of deforestation and an understanding that a lot of this land that had been cleared needed to be returned to forest in order to protect water resources and protect property. Later on in, in the life of this dam, it was converted for hydropower. So at the base of the dam now is the Little River Hydro Station, which generates as much as 5.5 megawatts of power. And really, the most important use of this place today is as a drinking, as, as a source of drinking water and as a, as a place for recreation. It's a rather large reservoir, about 860 acres of surface water area. It's about 100 feet deep at its maximum depth. And it's surrounded by just amazing hiking trails. The Mount Mansfield State Forest surrounds uh, this reservoir. And there's actually two state parks on either side of the reservoir, the Little River State Park and the Waterbury Center State Park. So it's a great place for hiking, for paddling. We just saw a couple of loons out here. So you could see loons and herons and eagles and hawks. It's really a great spot. More generally, it's an amazing place and a really interesting place to study social ecological systems, how natural systems and social systems interact.